Handle with care. <laughs> Handle with care, the vag. All right, update. Anybody wanna know what happened? <laughs> Let me put it to you this way. My friend Kim, who knows me very well, she said, Kat, don't set yourself up for disappointment. So I made sure I was not set up for disappointment. And uh, was I disappointed? Yes, but not for the reasons you might think. Hold on. Oh, goodness. I was disappointed for this reason and this reason only, all right? He had a condom and he insisted on wearing it. And I said, well, uh, my past with condoms, they, I don't fare well with condoms at all. Um, I used them when I was uh, with my children's father and they would leave me raw and I would get yeast infections afterwards and I wouldn't want to have sex for a while and it would feel like an emery board going in and out of my vagina. Well, guess what? Nothing's changed, only it's even worse. Because I looked at the box afterwards and I go, okay, okay, wait a minute. This is, this is an assortment pack? Which one did you use? And he found the package. He goes, the one with the uh, texture. It had little tiny polka dot teeth all over it. So it was a torture device. And sure enough, sure enough, I'm all irritated. I bleed the next day. And people are like, oh, oh, you need more lube. You know, you are um, menopausal after, after all. And I go, uh-huh, yeah, that's true. However, <laughs> this happened even in my 20s when I had plenty of natural lubricant. And so it is the condom itself. So I went on to YouTube video search and it took a while to dig down deep and find it. But yes, it is a consensus among women who are monogamous that a condom will ruin the vag. Now this one did not have a spermicide, but it had lubricant. All right, the lubricant is a artificial ingredient. I looked up what was in a Trojan condom. I wouldn't give that poison to an enemy. It is a atrocity to women and sex. And so for that guy, God bless him. I am a force to contend with, Kim said. She goes, Kat, you are a force to contend with. And I'm like, I know I am. But he doesn't know that I am. He he doesn't know. He he might think I'm grateful to be with a a man um, that's younger than me that has a Woody. Okay, but I've never had a problem with men and their um, stick shift unless they're impotent, which is what happened to the second one, um, my second husband. He became impotent because he used sex as a weapon. And he would withhold it from me. You know how people hear about women? Women are withhold sex. They use it as a political tool. They use it to have power over their men. Um, you get plenty of hot spider monkey sex before you get married. But once you get married, she like doesn't put out. No, that's such a myth. That's bullshit. This woman married has got the most healthy, vivacious, active sex lives on the planet and I discovered it's all me. I'm the one that is the um, ooh la la lady, you know? Okay, so we're all hot and heavy and he's like, you know, I have to use a condom and we had planned on getting together, okay? So it's like we had a nice day together. It was very romantic. Um, and when, I, and when I touched his skin, it was nice and hot, very responsive, and I felt the same way. And he's very sensuous. So he knew how to kiss, he knew how to be with me, he knew how to be present. And then he insisted on putting on the condom. And, and I was like, okay, so I haven't been with anybody since October of 2021. And it was somebody who I had been 10 years with 
So now I know why I kept going back to this guy. Um, and I won't go back to him because uh, th this, this, there's too much, there's, there's like, no, not doing it uh, because of the abuse. However, there's a reason why women go back to a, a fairly decent fuck. It's because they want to feel fucked. <laughs> <laughs> they they want a man to have fill them with their masculinity. They want to feel it. Otherwise, what is the purpose of the relationship of a masculine and a feminine? I mean, what is it? I've already had kids. I'm not going to play house. I don't need anybody to supply my, my living. I need a lover or want a lover. So very disappointing. Um, and... It was because he insisted on wearing one, and the minute it sec the second it entered, I was like, ah! Oh! And it sounds like it would be passion, but it felt like I was being sawed. It was war. It was awful. And then, of course, I expected him to be like all excited and come right away, and no, he just. I'm, I'm like, okay. I finally said, listen. I, I, I can't take much more of this. <laughs> I can only do so many oohs and ahs. And, and you don't fake like they're having a good time because it's really nice being in a man's arms and feeling him penetrate you. But I couldn't feel him. All I felt was this emery board of a Trojan textured with knobby knob condom sawing away at my petals. And it felt like a knife. Like it felt sharp even on the tip. Everything felt sharp. It was the worst fucking experience of my life. Second to the last time I had sex with my ex. The last one that wasn't married but ten, that lasted 10 years. You know, the, the my guy Virginia dude. That was the worst. Because he had been doing the bartender and all mad at me because I kept leaving to work and I'd only come back and be with him for 10 days out of 30. And he wanted me to be there all the time, but yet he abused me and would not um, give me the time of day. He just wanted me there because he's a narcissist and they want you to always be at their beck and call. And if you move in with them, they will punish you even more because they're sick in the head and they will punish you even more. <laughs> So yeah, there's a reason why women go back to a partner who can at least give them a vaginal orgasm and who's not afraid of their penis being seen, okay? So this guy didn't know I was in the peep show uh, when I was in my college years to pay for college. He didn't know I went on to become a stage dancer for five years. He didn't know any of this stuff. I kept, he doesn't know I have a YouTube station and I don't even care if he, if he finds out because it's selfish for a man to insist a woman who hasn't had sex with anybody but the same guy for 10 years to wear, to, for him to like do her with a condom that's got nibbies on it and it's sawing me like it's a emery board going into my vagina and out again. It was torture. It was awful. And I pretty much was like, listen, we're over. Uh, I, and I was like, I wanted to talk to you in person, but I'm infesturing because on top of it, I got BV. You know what BV is? It's bacterial osis vaginosis. It means your vagina stinks because the bacterial overgrowth occurs when you get irritation in the uterine canal. All right. So, of course, I have to pull out this doing this stuff. I'm not a doctor. This isn't medical advice. This is what I do. Pull out this. Okay. I got my uh, black seed oil, which is really, really difficult to handle. So I put it in these OO capsules. Basically, they're, ve they're vegan gelatin, not, not animal. And you get an eyedropper and fill it up and you put it in to here and you take two of those a day. Um, and then on top of it, there's also the, um, let me get it. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> there is <clears throat> neem oil. Oh my, I put this on. This is for uh, foot fungus, dandruff, things like that. 
and it has a, a, a scent that's pretty strong, but it was so soothing. I put that on my vag and it went purr, purr, <laughs> and of course this, 10 drops. And so I'm taking care of it. Um, I, I just, I'm using what I have on hand. I didn't have any acidophilus suppositories. Otherwise, that's what one would use. One would use acidophilus suppositories. But I told him, I said, hey, let's get together on Friday or Saturday or Sunday, you know, whatever works for you. And he goes, okay. And then I was like, listen, I can't wait until then to tell you what's going on with me. And uh, I know you have to work and concentrate and shit like that, but I can't concentrate because I have a burning sensation and it stinks because it's BV. And you know what that's like as a female to have your most precious thing, my commodity, my beautiful commodity, but also my giver of pleasure. It gives me pleasure. I receive the greatest amount of pleasure because I have a clitoris and a vagina and a labia and it all works optimally. And so I'm very grateful for it. I don't abuse it. I don't use dildos that have batteries in them. I stay away from that thing. It's mano y mano. I use my imagination in my hands, okay? And I am able to achieve orgasm, multiple orgasm with my own body whenever the need arises. And with a woman who's menopausal like I am, you need to keep things going so that you can have the proper amount of blood flow because it's true as a female if you don't lose it you will lose it i don't need to watch porn i don't need anything but my imagination and i don't even fantasize about a guy all i do is feel the sensations of my body and i move the kundalini and i get into it okay all right so the man doesn't know that I've seen dozens and dozens of men jerk off and I'm totally comfortable with the male anatomy. I'm also, he doesn't know that I used to have a light shining on my vag so guys could jerk off. There was a plexiglass, so there was a hole in it like this. <laughs> Some girls did the jobs, the hand jobs, the blow jobs. They used condoms, they used gloves or Listerine or what have you. Some of them charged 40, some of them charged 80. I didn't do it. Why? Because I did phone sex and I did education and I posed. All I did was pose and I would show my vag and it didn't take but five minutes and I had $20 in my purse and they'd be gone all satisfied with their orgasm because they weren't alone in a booth with a porn star yanking, jerking the chicken. You know what I'm saying? So I also, the education part, I would have brothers bring in their younger brothers and I would be like, all right, let me show you the lady parts. And they would say, hey, I'm going to give you an education. Let me tell you about the lady parts. And then I would say, you know that porn stuff that you guys see in those booths over there across the way? That is not how to have sex. That's porn sex. That is not how to satisfy a woman. And I would describe to them what kind of foreplay she needs, what to feel. If she's wet, that's great, but it still doesn't mean you have to slide it in right away. And dude... If you're all nervous, you better jerk off first before you, she comes in contact with you because otherwise you're gonna come right away and then she's gonna be disappointed. She's gonna be left at the beginning and you're already gonna finish the race. <laughs> so, all right, I'm a force to contend with, I am. And uh, this guy didn't um, know any better and I allowed him uh, to wear it and it stung right away. Okay, so ladies, if a man insists on a condom, he must be lying to you about his fidelity. And so he must have been either sexually active more recently than he lets on. And I do remember him telling me he had gone to the doctor and he didn't tell me what for. So it was before he and I were items. So he wasn't like necessarily getting a checkup for ED. I had that before in the past. And then this guy leaves the pamphlets around. What to know about ED? That's erectile dysfunction for those who don't know. And it's like, huh, okay, he's got ED. I can be patient with that. There's other ways. There's more than one ways to pleasure a cat. <laughs> I, I can be patient. All right, I'm a very loving and giving partner. What do you need from me? 
Uh, and it's like, I'm willing to learn and grow. So what I said to this guy is like, I got BV. Uh, I know how to take care of it, but I'm disappointed in myself. I'm not angry with you. And I respect your choice to wear a condom because you can't, he goes, he goes, it's in my head. I mean, in other words, he wouldn't probably be able to get an erection or he would lose it and then it wouldn't be good at sex anyway. And he'd be frustrated and feel emasculated and embarrassed by his lack of heart on. Okay. So I get that. But we've got a problem. Houston, we have a big problem because I'm not going to have sex with a man who's hung up about uh, condoms and maybe he's lying to me and maybe he has herpes or something. I, why don't we just do the inspection thing? Showing a flashlight in between my legs. You're welcome to see my beautiful petals, a pure pink love and joy. I'm proud of my body. I love it. It's an instrument of pleasure. I love it. So now out of the blue, I, I get uh, a, uh, a call uh, from an ex date who I dated in 2015 and his lady like broke up with him over nothing. And again, and I'm like, and he's telling me on text messaging, um, that he doesn't understand it and that she just like flies off the handle and stuff like that and i was like dude we could ha we could have conversations i'm sure <laughs> i didn't tell him about mine i was i'm not gonna i'm gonna spare that sort of privacy um from my personal relationships i have an audience okay you guys know more about my sex life or my current boyfriend <laughs> Here's to that, because he would not be able to handle it. Imagine, oh yeah, uh, by the way, guy that I'm into right now and working towards a romantic budding relationship, I want you to know that uh, when I was a starving college student, I put in a roommate wanted ad and this woman answered it and I, I needed a housemate. And the reason why I needed a housemate is because I couldn't make ends meet. And I couldn't even buy groceries. I mean, my goodness, old Mother Hubbard went to her cupboard to find a something for her dog. Okay, I had a can of sardines I shared with my cat, Elpo. <laughs> I had one can of sardines, which are really good food because you eat the whole fish. It's got excellent EFAs and it has bones that you eat that are crunchy. So you're getting plenty of minerals to boot. My cat was happy, I was happy, I ate for the day. It was the best diet ever. So I got in great shape, because I couldn't eat any food, because I didn't have any. <laughs> and this woman answers my housemate wanted ad, and then she says, you don't need to have a housemate, you need to have a job as a playmate. And then she told me all about this place, Lay Girls in Tucson, Arizona. And I was on, it was an all nude dancing place and it's in my books, right? I'm, I'm working on writing them. I need an incentive. I need somebody to give me a, um, a, a down payment or something. I could use $5,000 to write that fucker. <laughs> my little expose. Wait, okay, in the meantime, people don't realize that I was doing the world a service and I was educating these guys on the dainties and how to handle the pleasuring of a woman and letting them know that porn was not the way to go. Now, I'm telling you now, neither are condoms in a monogamous relationship in which pregnancy isn't even an issue, okay? So now I'm like, all right, I'm way too free sexually in the sense of my ability to ple find pleasure with a man that, that to be, I'm way too free sexually to be able to, to experience pleasure in my own body and skin to have sex with a man who has to wear a condom and one that's got little nibby knobs on it, no less. Now, people are like, oh, there's polyurethane ones out there. Okay, there's the intestinal ones, the pig skins, but those will not, uh, they are membranes, they have, they breathe, the, there is a transference of uh, everything going through the cell wall of the condom. So it's not, it's not an STD preventer, but 
why would I need an STD protection from a monogamous relationship with a guy who swears he's monogamous? Unless he's lying. All right. Now, I had 27 years of sex and he only had six because he was only married for that long. And he said he didn't have sex for the last two years. Okay. I'm giving TMI, I suppose. Uh, his wife uh, had problems. But I'm not the one with the problems, okay? I have a problem now. It's called BV. And I have to take care of it the natural way, which I showed you. And again, it is not medical advice. It's what I do. And this, ooh la la, made things feel way better. Ha <laughs> ha. And this thing, internally. Love it. Black seed oil. It does a lot of other magical things. And then this, 10 drops in water. It's grapefruit seed extract. It'll take your enamel off your teeth. So make sure you follow directions. So yeah, where we're at is I'm going to get together with my friend. We're going to laugh about women who break up with men over arguments that are perceptibly over nothing. I'm going to find out what a shrink has to say. Uh, he's a baby boomer. Um, I'm going to ask him uh, a couple of personal questions about whether or not he takes woody medicine. <laughs> like, do you take boner pills, dude? <laughs> How healthy is your mentality? But see, I'm not ready to have sex. I still love this other guy. I really do. I have feelings for him. But I'm not going to like um, be around him right now because all I see is pain. All I associate him with now is pain. My body is like pain. When I, it's like a, the association I have with him is now pain. And you don't want to do that with a uh, partner, let alone a lover. I mean, a partner that's a lover. Your lover partner, you know, your main squeeze that you can't squeeze with your muscles because it hurts too much. I mean, I was trying. I was using my internal um, muscles to like, and I was like, every single time I did, it was like, oh, awful. So I finally was like, dude, can you like, you know, finish yourself off? <laughs> I can't take it anymore. So uh, without going into TMI, I'm perfectly comfortable with that sort of thing. And, and I just felt like, you know, this hurt and I don't miss sex if this is the kind of sex I'm going to experience. Yeah. Handle with care, man. Handle with care. So let's add to this thing, okay? Handle with care. Maybe he was protecting me because guess what? He had two of these during the Covidious minimus years, you know, 2021 or whatever it was. He had two of them. Maybe there's something in his sperm that I got protected from. So, you know what, maybe I'm better off. But here's the deal, when you're with a man who has unadulterated sperm and it's just regular sperm, unless he eats too much sugar, which makes it acidic and it will sting, because um, I know this for a fact, my children's father, my first husband, he would do so much sugar in his coffee and Pepsi that uh, it stung. So the second guy, he was a vegetarian, pescatarian, he ate all natural, his was wonderful and it, it was like really delightful and when you have semen in your vag it makes you feel closer to the partner you bond your serotonin levels go up your dopamine goes up you just feel so loved now here's the other thing i love sleeping in dirty sheets as long as they're not too wet okay avoid the wet spot but Having made love and then be in that beautiful scent of sex and being in that juicy uh, afterglow is bonding. He had to change the sheets right away. And we had like not even a quarter size of, 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 uh, of, uh, of liquid. And it wasn't blood. That didn't come till the next day. <laughs> and I told him. And in person, because he came, he came over and hung out, and I made sandwiches. I love taking care of my man. He had to work on his computer for four hours and do his job. I made sandwiches. So I'm a very loving and giving person, but the buck stops at condoms. And also, I really, really need a man who... I don't need, but I prefer a man who's comfortable with his own sexuality. I want to be able to see his penis. I want to see what goes into me. All right? And 
there's still there's shame built in to um some men and it's like such a astounding thing if you're gonna stick yourself in me wearing sandpaper <laughs> and you feel shame what's the fucking point if you don't trust me what's the point if you don't trust yourself if you're lying to me what's the point you know so anyway, we're over probably because I laid it out. I was like, I can't do this um, and you can't do this. You can't be with a woman uh, without wearing a condom and I can't be with any uh, condom. And now I'm pissed. I said, uh, and I let him have it. I let him have it and I don't care anymore. I'm not gonna dance around some guy's fragile ego. He convinced me and I was like, okay, okay, okay. I'll try it. I'll try it. So we got ourselves in the mood. He's, he's a good pre-entry uh, lover. I mean, I don't have any qualms with that. He he was attentive. Um, and I let him know that even before he entered me, he had been like dancing around, around my clitoral uh, area. And I had an, a nice soft little orgasm, but I didn't yell and scream because I didn't want to ruin the moment. And also it was like the first time uh, I had experienced that with him and I didn't feel like announcing it. And plus it was very subtle. It was very soft. It wasn't intense. And I've had the screaming kind and it doesn't mean they're better. It just means that this one was like very, very subtle, very soft. I mean, I give, I can give myself better ones. And so that's the other sad part uh, is that like, I'm just so comfortable with my own body and I'm so used to like being with a like 10, 10, seven years for the first husband, 10 years for the second husband, and then 10 years for the, the last relationship that ended in October of 2021. And up until I left, we had intercourse. And then the last time was really bad because he was selfish and he was punishing me for making him have sex with the bartender because I wasn't there to take care of his needs. And so he was resentful. And so um, he wasn't going to give me the satisfaction I deserved. I'm guessing that was what's going on in his head. And I said in my last video, it's like, yeah, I didn't even want to pleasure myself. Usually that's what women will do. When, when men jump off after they got off and they go into the shower, you think we're just laying there in, 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 in co uh, post-coitus bliss, happy. If you didn't get us off, we're taking care of ourselves. I don't mind you watching <laughs> if you're my lover. If you stick around long enough, I'll teach you how to do it. But, you know, it takes a while for a man to get to know a woman's body and vice versa. And so I said to this, my lover, um, who may or may not be my ex, but I'm not going to be with him if he has to wear a condom. And I also don't want to jerk him off. I want him in me, but maybe I don't, you know? He took this, ba -ching, ba -ching. oh, which brings me to this. All right, the last video I told you, my mother has endocarditis. Uh, she had four of these, one, two, three, four, the mRNA, all right? Yeah, 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 that's what she had. And mm -mm, awful, she uh, has the clots. She got the massive clots. Um, and then the clot shut her brain down. So her dementia, her little early signs of dementia are now full blown. And yeah, I'm hoping she's just going to be a little sweet pussycat of a woman and a girl other than this vicious viper she was the last time I was there. Letting me have it. Um, I have it on recorder. I'll play it for you sometime. You're going to be so stunned that anyone could talk to another person the way she spoke to me. It's despicable. It's sad, but I did tell her, I can't handle it. Handle with care, man. I am a delicate flower. Tough as nails on the inside, but on my body, delicate flower. I'm a fine tuned instrument, a fine tuned instrument. Who knows how to make love? I know the ins and outs, if you know what I mean. When one of my favorite positions is being on top, I can really come that way. With a lover that's established that we have trust, all right? I'm not a woman who's promiscuous and I don't just jump a guy's boner. 
Okay, so what's going on? I was expecting a client and so I was waiting for her and she text messages me. Her son, uh, sorry, sorry, not her son. Her son's dog died two days ago. Okay, so that's the bearer of bad news. She had to shorten her session with me. And now she tells me a friend died suddenly. So a friend died suddenly. My mother has endocarditis and had a, a stroke and, with, because of blood clots. Is it correlation or causation when it comes to the ba -ching, ba -ching, ba -ching, ba -ching. <laughs> You tell me. All I'm gonna tell you is they're gonna start dropping like flies here in the States um, because most people I know bought that shit hook, line, and sinker because I happen to be in an area, RTP, that believes in the medical um, mafia and all that they promote, including um, exams and tests that I would consider 100% unnecessary and invasive, including a pap smear, which is number one, an invasion of your beautiful dainties, and number two, a swab is going in there that's got some sort of caustic material on it, and it burns the cervix. And they're scraping the cervix and putting a little dab of your beautiful cell culture onto a um, in, in a Petri dish or on a slide so they can look at it to see if you've got a disease. <laughs> if I've got a problem, it's going to smell. If I've got a problem, it's going to have some sort of reaction. So I knew right away when that lover entered me and I'm like, oh, and it's like, this isn't a pleasure yell. It's stung. I go, it's stung and it kept stinging. So girls, if that happens to you, stop. Make it coitus interruptus right there and then, or you will have BV or a vaginal uh, yeast infection, and then you'll have to deal with it. And so I'm dealing with the aftermath. So I'm gonna get together with my friend. We're gonna have a cocktail tonight. We're gonna talk, and I'm just gonna be with a man who thinks I'm sexy, and probably I'm gonna have to become a serial dater. <laughs> until I find my sexual equal. And now I know what kind of questions to ask. Do you have an STD? Do you have a hard time getting a hard on? If so, are you using woody pills? There's nothing wrong with that. How is your heart? How many jabs did you have? Right? Because you know, you, what happens if I break a guy in and get to know who he is and then he gets myocarditis, you know? So it's like, geez, Louise, <laughs> what is this world coming to? So yeah, my friend Kim, she's like, you are forced to, t to contend with Kat. Mm -hmm. I sure am. I'll, I'll fill you in more later. I feel, I feel for the guy, my, my lover. Um, but I wasn't gonna hold any bars back. I, I wasn't gonna pretend that I wasn't in pain. I wasn't gonna pretend I wasn't angry. And he can do his uh, patent attorney thing and go into his myopia, myopic modus operandi, which is good for a guy to do. Like la 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 la, get rid of the estrogen um, infl infiltration. I've got a job to do, I get it, okay. But I let him know how I feel, felt. And the ball is in his court. And I said to him also, I go, one last thing. I'm willing to go to a clinic. I'm willing to get tests. I'm willing to ride this thing out with you, but we're not, the game's over if you're insisting on me uh, experiencing a torture device. I'm not doing it. It's not worth it. And there is no amount of price that I will pay for sex other than it's freely given from a man who feels comfortable in his own skin. And now I know I'm gonna to have to continue to keep my standards, which is how many of these did you take in your arm and have you cleansed with NAC? We'll talk about that later. Ciao.